Yeah, it's Nigeria. One of the long haul flights we do an overnight, so uh, it'll be a couple of days before I see you. Oh well, I'll be thinking about you. As soon as I get back, I will do that. Bye. Take care. Cheers. Cheers. You heard from Tracy lately? No, no. Well, not for a week or so. No, me neither. Oh, well, I suppose she'll write when she wants something. Yeah. Have you told her about the current boyfriend yet? No. Oh, I just wondered, since uh, the judge by where he evidently spent last night, the friendship seems to be blossoming remarkably quickly. Ken, if you keep your opinions about my friends to yourself, I'll do the same with yours, OK? As a matter of fact, he's very nice. I told him about you, about how you were going to be needing a job, and he said he could ask and see if there's anything going at the airport. And what did he have in mind? Baggage handler? When did you land? Touchdown just after six. How come? I thought it was going to be tomorrow. Are you complaining? No, no, I'm just in a whirl. Well, I had the chance to change flights and see you sooner, so I took it. Here, I bought you these. Oh, John. I've really missed you, Deirdre. I've missed you too. Here we are. Uh, hey, relax. He'll be stuck in traffic. It's over an hour, Liz. He's usually early. Well, there'll be some reason he'll turn up. Yeah, that's what's worrying me. Willie. I mean, how well do I know the fella? How do you mean? I think I've been stood up. Look, I'm sorry, I, I can't hear you very well. Yes, Frankfurt. Well, I, I don't know, about two or three hours ago. Oh, right, I see. OK, yeah, thanks very much. Bye-bye. Oh, his flight's been diverted to the East Midlands, some technical problem. But has it landed? Oh, oh well, as long as he's safe. Liz, my hands were shaking when I was dialing. I'm getting too involved, aren't I? It's worrying me. Oh, I'd go with it. I know it could do a lot worse. But, as I said before, if you do change your mind, just tip me the wink. <laughs> hey, keep <laughs> off you. I saw him first. Anyway, just in case he rings, I think I'd better get back to the flat. Oh, right. Well, I'll get off as well, then. Hi. Hiya. Uh, what do you want, sir? I'll have the pills, please. Pills, uh, pint of better, and yeah. we pass us the others, Jack, please. Hiya. Um, could I have a word? Yeah, sure. Uh, you go and I'll catch you. Okay, see ya, love. Uh, look, I'm having enough bother with Steve without you sticking your six pen of him. Don't follow you? Yesterday, telling tales to Alan. Oh, no. I told the truth. I didn't know you kept secrets from him. It's not my problem, Fiona. Sure. Once I found out what had happened... I... Look, I'm sorry. I should have let you know. It doesn't matter. Only I wasn't sure you'd want me phoning you at the pub. Yeah. So, how did you get back? Minibus. What, you and the stewardesses? The crew? It does include a couple of stewardesses. Why do you say it like that? Oh, I don't know. Insecurity, I suppose. Don't you trust me? Yeah. Well, I think I do. I just can't for the life of me think... Well, why me? Listen, there's no contest. Go on, say it. You go for the maturer woman. <laughs> Let's just say I go for you. As simple as that. Morning. 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 Have you seen this? Oh, must have gone up early. I wonder who bought it. Well, I'm glad somebody has. Left like this for long and it'd soon be vandalised. I'd say Fred Elliot had an eye to the main chance. It's not just our Maureen's body he's after. Well, I mean, it's obvious, isn't it? He's got the meat business nicely sorted. And now he's after dry goods. Where are we going? 
Come on. Deirdre, stay there. Hi. Deirdre, will you look after the girls for me? What, you mean now? I've got to go somewhere. I can't, Sally, love, I'm sorry. I won't be long. I'm just off to the pictures with Liz. She's due any minute. Please. Yeah, well, her shift starts at eight. We've got to go to the early <gasps> showing. Sally, what's the matter, love? What's wrong? Kevin's seeing somebody. Kevin? I know where they are and I've got to go to them. And I can't take the girls. I don't know who to ask. Yeah, you go. I'll keep them. They'll be fine with me. Thanks. I can't believe it. Got to talk to him. Will you be all right on your own? Do you want me to come with you? No. I don't want the girls to see me like this. You look fine. Don't worry about them. Come on. Can I do anything else for you? No. Rosie, Sophie, um, Deirdre's going to be looking after you because Mummy's got to go somewhere. Yeah, we'll have some fun, eh? Do you want to come and have a look at my new flat? Yeah. Come on, then. Let's go and say goodbye to Mummy. Good luck. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Watch you, mates. Hiya! Are you ready? Uh, yes, but... Wait till I tell you. They're all right. I've given him some magazines to look at. Magazines? I've got nothing else. <sighs> What do you think she'll do? Shout and scream. What else is there? Hey, of all the men in this street, Kevin Webster. Well, you never see it coming. I would look at him. He's a nice fella. Works hard, cares for his family. Loves his wife. I feel sorry for the girls. They won't know what's going on. Well, they'll know something. Rosie will. Why do you think people do it? Oh, you just... You get drawn into it. You don't realise the consequences. Of course you do. You know who you're married to and who you're not. You may believe nobody will know. You, you go to any lengths to keep it secret. So you won't get found out. So nobody will get hurt. You pretend you're protecting your family. From discovering what a liar you are. I never thought Kevin Webster were like that. Well, maybe he's not. Maybe he just wasn't happy with Sally. I mean, you don't know how people are. You get bored, envious. Sometimes it doesn't take much. Anyway, it's their problem. And how is it? We're going to miss the film. Oh, yeah, it starts in 20 minutes. Give her a ring, see if she's back. We can't leave it much longer. Well, if she's not back. Well, we're safe, Billsy. Here's the granddad. I don't want to go dragging him around the streets. Well, there's only so much we can do, Deirdre. And if we get a move on, we might still make it. She said she wouldn't be long. Sympathy's all very well, but... But what? Well, Sally wasn't exactly on my side. When? When that maniac broke loose with a shotgun. <laughs> Sally wasn't there. What did she do? She gave me a right mouthful for putting her kids in danger for a start. As if Jerry were aiming the gun at them. A mother will fight for her kids, Liz. You should know that yourself. Maybe that's Sally's problem. She's put kids first. Everybody objected to having an armed criminal in the street. You and I exchanged a few words on the subject, if you remember. I do. Didn't mean to say we weren't still friends. I'm being oversensitive, aren't I? You always were a tender soul. <sighs> That's what Jim used to say. <sighs> Look, we don't know what's gone on between Kevin and Sally, but whatever it is, Sally's reeling from it, and I feel sorry for her. Yeah, I suppose I do too. But I still want to see the film. It comes off at the end of the week. Mm. Let's go to Bill's and... Well, if we can't find somebody to take him, we'll bring him back here and watch a video. 
Give us the coats. Rosie, Sophie, come here. Go on to you, Daddy. Having a good look, are you? Rosie? Sophie? Come here. Go on. Show's over. Kevin. Listen. Don't do anything you might regret. All right, love. I just came to see how you are. I see Kevin's at work as usual. Is everything all right? No. He's been there all day as if nothing had happened. He was with her last night. Oh, God. Is Daddy coming over? Is Daddy coming home now? Rosie. Is it coming for his tea? Now, go upstairs. Keep an eye on Sophie for me. Yeah, he just rolled up this morning, started work at the garage. He's not been near us. Has he, uh, has he left you then? No, I chucked him out. I told him straight he's not wanted. I can't believe you mean that. I do. If he wants her, then that's fine. She's welcome to him. Well, I got a good look at him just now. And he doesn't look to me like a happy man. Why don't you talk to him? I'm not chasing after him. I've been humiliated enough as it is. If he wants us, he'll come to us. But he doesn't. He wants her. Look! He's going to a sea. That's what he wants. I told you, didn't I? Be seat belt fastened properly. Yeah. Right. Is that the lot? Yeah. For now, anyway. Thanks, Deirdre. Is there anything else you want me to do for you, Sally? No. Oh, there is one thing. Could you pop in the cabin for me, if you wouldn't mind, and just cancel our papers? What, you mean you haven't told Rita? She doesn't know what's happening? No, I can't face it. Explaining everything. I don't want any of that. All I want to do is just go. Will you phone me? Yeah. Bye, girls. Take good care of your mum. Bye. Hi. Oh, you're all dressed up, I see. Where are you going? Nowhere. I've already been. To this restaurant to meet Fred Elliott. And he didn't turn up. Oh. Well, he, he wouldn't just stand you up. I mean, there must be a good reason. Oh, yes, I know there is. He stood at that bar, that silly old golf club, knocking that drink back. Well, I tell you, if he thinks that I'm going to sit there and wait all night, he has got another thing coming. <laughs> Alma? Hello. Just been admiring your life-size image. Congratulations. Oh, don't. It's so embarrassing. Well, it shouldn't be. They must think very highly of you. I wish they did of me. You know, I've been given the push at school. Redundant. On the scrap heap after next week. Oh. Well, you just have to start again, do something new like I'm doing here. Oh, you do it. You know you will. Oh, thanks, Alma. I should certainly try. Supply teaching, I hope. But anyway, whatever happens. Uh... <clears throat> See the bloke behind me there? It's Deirdre's boyfriend. The one with the bottle of brandy? He's an airline pilot. Yes, I heard. <laughs> Very nice, lucky Deirdre. Oh, what a stupid thing to say. I am sorry. No, it's OK, it's OK. I suppose I should be thinking good luck to her, but uh, somehow I can't manage that. I'm sorry, I really am. No! Oh, <laughs> he is a nice-looking man. Oh, he is. You are lucky, Deirdre. I mean, look at me. Red Jolesworth and Fred Elliott. <laughs> <laughs> and not enough hair between the two of them to want back in the coat. <laughs> oh. Hey, the uniform does no harm, does it? No. Oh, yes, of course. You're the expert on uniforms. Oh. What? Oh, you mean Jim? Oh, give over. Mucky khaki all covered in oil. Oh. Though it did look rather nice in his blues the odd time he wore them. <laughs> Of course. All men have snags, don't they? What's this fella's? Well, I haven't found one. Yet. Yet. I suppose he is a whale. Well, yes, he is. But uh, I'd rather like knowing when he's going to be here and when he's not. It's quite nice getting the odd phone call from Paris telling me Aww. when he's going to be on his way. 
Good looking and reliable. It's not fair, is it, Liz? No. I mean, take Fred Elliott. Now, you'd think a man that wasn't, you know, so good looking would try a bit harder to be nice, wouldn't you? To compensate. Why? What's he done now? Stood me up last night. There I am in a restaurant, and, and Ashley says he often does a disappearing act and goes out boozing for days. Tough. Oh, well, it's no good asking me. I'm a disaster at choosing my nasty Deirdre. Well, give over. What do I know? And even if you do find yourself a good'un, you never know when it's all going to get taken away from you. I mean, look at Sally Webster. You're sooner than I expected. Is that bad? Anything but. Mm. How was Switzerland? Well, all I saw of it this time was their airspace. However, I did just have time to get to something from the Zurich Duty Free Shop. Cognac. Do you drink it? Well, on the rare occasions that it's been offered, yes, thank you. How long have I got you for? Well, till tomorrow morning, if that suits. That'll do nicely. What about this evening, then? Do you fancy a restaurant or what? Oh, let's eat in. I'll go to the corner shop later and get us the makings. We can have this for afters. Hmm. Mm. Afternoon. Ah, how's Captain Kirk? He's very well, thank you. You want to watch that tone, Ken? It sounded suspiciously like sarcasm, and that could only mean one thing, really, couldn't it? Well, that I'm jealous? No, 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 not at all. I could have been, until I saw him shopping at Furman's and realised he's only human, like all the rest of us. Oh, well, what do you expect him to do? Nip down to Arrods every time he fancies a packet of fish fingers? Oh, not fish fingers, no, but uh, brandy? I mean, buying brandy at Furman's? That's a bit uh, déclassé, isn't it? Brandy? Ah, oh, is it? I don't know. What's de classe? Er, uh, common. Oh, well, that's OK, then, because I am common, aren't I? What time did you say you saw him? Er, uh, this morning, about 11. Oh, well, you couldn't have done, because he was flying back from Zurich, then. Cheers. Cheers. Ken said he saw you this morning. Did he? Shopping in Furman's. I uh, said he must have been mistaken because you were flying back from Zurich at the time, but he insisted it was you. No, he's right, it was me. And uh, did he also happen to tell you what I was buying there as well? <clears throat> A bottle of brandy. Now, why would he tell you something like that? It's true, is it? <laughs> he's got it in for me, your ex, hasn't he? Ken didn't know when he said it that you give me a bottle of brandy as a present. Admittedly, he was point scoring when he mentioned it because he thought it was common buying brandy in Furman's. But he didn't know that you told me you got it in Zurich. OK. I bought the brandy in Furman's and not in Zurich. I swapped rotors with a colleague. I actually flew to Zurich earlier in the day and the turnaround time was a bit shorter. I didn't have time to do any shopping, and I didn't want to disappoint you. I am sorry. I'd rather you didn't lie to me in future, even about something so trivial, because I, I'm not a little kid. I didn't want you to feel that I wasn't thinking about you, and that's why I did it. Sorry. It's OK. Do you think I'm common? No. <laughs> <laughs> that one, I think. Ken, these are for five to seven-year-olds. Look, I know all parents say this, but Daniel actually is very advanced, but to... Two and a half? Yeah, OK. <laughs> Let's go with the car. Right. I don't want to be a pushy dad. <laughs> are you going to see him? Hello, Jim. Uh -huh, yes. Yeah, better than that, Mavis. He's coming to see me oh. for a whole fortnight. Oh. The longest we've been together since... Well... Oh, go on, I can't afford it, but let's have them both. You do right. Spoil the little lad while you've got the chance. Here we are. Thank oh, you. Oh, hang on. Give him those from his Auntie Rita. Thank you, Rita. Not Very at all. all. Oh, sorry. Bye, oh, sorry. Bye, Bye Ken. Oh, no. Bye. Oh, no. Bye. Oh, no. I've heard Amsterdam's very picturesque. <laughs> Shipholes, not. That's about all we get to see on our hectic turnaround. Oh, listen, this girl I used to work with, I remember her boyfriend took her to Amsterdam for her birthday. And uh, they were sightseeing round the red light district, you know. Uh, only by repute. Oh, I'll bet. Anyway, 
her mind was boggling with all these weird objects they have in the sex shops. And then she sees this one thing in a window and she turns to her boyfriend, she says, what the heck would you use that for? And he says, it's a fishing rod. <laughs> <laughs> she, um, she said it was very romantic all the same. Why don't we go? To buy some fishing rods? No, to have a break. We could both use one. I mean, I could find us a deal, but it'd be a lot cheaper if you got the flights on your staff concession. What do they give you, 10% of the normal fare? Uh, subject to availability. Oh, so we just turn up and take the first one that's got two seats going spare. Oh, it'll be an adventure, not knowing where we're going till we get there. Hmm. I'm sorry. Am I taking too much for granted? Oh, no, not at all. It's a terrific idea. Really? You worry too much. I can't help it. Every time I have taken anything good for granted in my life, it's just blown up in my face. Not this time. Hey. Ah! I took a chance on some convivial company turning up to share it, and I was right. Well, actually, I'm meeting John. But uh, no, go on, then. Thanks. Another glass, please, Ellie. Uh, yes, right. Why the bottle? I'm celebrating. It should be champagne by rights. Oh. Uh, something exciting? Well, not in your terms, Alec, but it is in mine. I'm having Daniel to stay for two weeks. Oh, let me guess. She's going on holiday and she needs a free babysitter. What a cynic. <coughs> yeah, that was my first thought, too. But no, it's all above board. No devious motives. Well, that'll be a first for her, then. Well, Denise might not be going away, but I am. Me and John are taking a few days off. That's nice. Where to? Oh, we haven't decided yet, but it'll be somewhere hot and exotic. Well, if we can't, who can? By heck, Deirdre. Got yourself a nice catch there, huh? Oh, fine. Do you have any children? Unfortunately, no. My uh, ex wasn't interested. I think that's so unfair. It was her choice. Right, well, I'll leave you to plan your trip. Have the rest on me. Well, thank you. Cheers. I told Ken we were going on holiday. Oh, actually, I've dug out some hotel details. Um, the Spain, France, Italy, Switzerland. Um, I thought we wouldn't go too far, you know, with it just being for a few days. Actually, I was thinking of Scotland. Scotland? I've always wanted to tour the Highlands. <laughs> the thing is, darling, uh, flying would be a busman's holiday for me. Oh, of course. Oh, that'd be lovely. Hey, Sonny, three pounds. Right. Will you ring me when you get to Nairobi? As soon as we land. Oh, I'm going to miss you. Listen. Have a nice weekend. I'll try. Hey, what's the matter? Oh, take the notice. I'm just soft. You fly carefully. It's a long way to Nairobi. Sure. You're on a trip? Yeah, I just out of Scotland. Oh, of course. Yeah, pick Daniel out. Oh, smashing. Two weeks with him all to yourself. John's just off to Nairobi. Is he? Is he really? I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean... I was just saying... Have a great time. I'll see you. Bye. You know, I couldn't believe it this morning. I got all weepy when I was saying to Ral. He's been a real tonic for you, hasn't he? Yeah, he has. I never thought I'd get excited about anybody again after Samia. I mean, that with Ken. That was... Well, it was a bit like putting a favourite baggy old jumper on. Oh, dear. Well, it was, let's be honest. But this... Well, I got all tingly inside when I think about it. 
Oh, good heavens. I do. Especially when I've had a few. Oh, this will be him. He said he'd ring as soon as he landed. Hello? Hello? Deirdre. John. It's him. Hello? John? What sort of a day have you had? Fine, fine. What about you? John, hello. I said, what about you? Great. It's a really good flight. You sound a bit funny. Everything's fine. I said, John, you sound a bit funny. There's a time delay. A what? A time delay on international calls. It's always worse from Nairobi for some reason. Uh, listen, Deirdre, I'll have to go. I've got some things to do. Right. So I'll ring you again when I get five minutes. OK. OK. Well, um, look after yourself and I'll see you on. <laughs> Thanks for ringing. No problem at all. Bye. 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 Oh. See you tomorrow. He's gone. Oh. Strange to think of him being so far away. Hot night in Nairobi. Mm, I wish I was there. This is starting to sound serious to me, Deirdre. I know. I know all the signs. I'm in love. I've called to see how Daniel is. In fine voice. Did you hear him last night? Oh, we did. Loud and long. <laughs> it was like old times. So, Mr. Sugden's record didn't do the trick. I don't think I can remember hearing him cry so much, and he finally got off about five o'clock. He must have been exhausted. He wasn't the only one. You got anything planned for today? Well, nothing special. Certainly nothing that involves travelling. We had enough of that yesterday. Well, you'll have time to relax and get to know him again. Yeah, I intend to. You're very wary of me at the moment. Oh, he'll soon get used to you. You'll know he's on familiar territory. Well, after yesterday, things can only get better. If they don't, you can play Mr. Sugden's steam trains to him again. <sighs> I'm not sure which is worse. You missed you. You should have come straight here. It was too late. <sighs> we had to divert to Rome. And why was that? Who knows? Anything can happen on the Nairobi run. <laughs> there were security problems, as usual. <sighs> we sat on the tarmac half the night. Oh, you could have woke me up. I wouldn't have minded. No, I wanted to go home. I haven't seen much of the place lately. Does somebody look after it for you? I get a woman in to clean now and again. I like to do it myself, really. <laughs> You're not domesticated, too, as well as everything else. If you can land a passenger jet at night in driving rain, <laughs> you can get the hang of domestic appliances. Oh, I'll introduce you to my deep fat fryer one of these days. That'll wipe the smile off your face. <laughs> I've got a better idea. What? I'll introduce you to mine. Are you inviting me to your house? Yes. Why not? <laughs> I don't know. No reason. I do have a home, you know. I don't spend all my time in hotels. Oh, five-star hotels, by the sound of it. I wouldn't mind the odd night in one myself. You get tired of them. They're all the same. After a while, you don't know whether you're in Leeds or Los Angeles. Oh, I bet the sun and the sand give it away. Ah, you're familiar with West Yorkshire. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but uh, somewhere more exotic does appeal. <laughs> OK, then. Wednesday night. Wipe your feet and bring your toothbrush. I will. Mm. <laughs> Who ordered the ham sandwich? Oh, I did. Well, we ain't got any. Really? You can have the cheese. I don't want cheese. She don't want it. Uh, I'm sorry, Mrs Bishop, but the ham didn't seem very nice today. Looked all right to me. I'm not prepared to serve it. Daff you, no one notice. We have a choice between cheese, salmon, a chicken or prawn. The cheese stinks. Is that your grandson, Mr Barlow? No, it isn't, Claire. Oh. Are you looking after him for someone? No. Is 
It's giving you our time. We already had a long journey yesterday. He's a bit tired. I'll eat them chips if you don't want them. I think you'll manage one or two more. Well, are you having the cheese or what? I'd prefer the salmon. Well, why didn't you say so? A man will leave something to be desired. Don't they teach him anything at that school of yours, Kenneth? I taught them English. We tried to. What about the old values, eh? Elocution, deportment, etiquette. Well, they're not on the curriculum, Percy, more's the pity. You have to go to a Swiss finishing school for those. That's not a bad idea. That's marvellous. That's, that's an inspiration. She could take her sister with her and her parents. And her television and her CD player and her speakers. You know, since they moved in, I've practically forgotten what peace and quiet is. <laughs> God, Daniel. Nice, <laughs> Yes, I am. But you're too old. He's only about three. He's two. Could bloke your age still do it? Men can father children well into their 70s and 80s. Have you got any? No, I haven't. Were you in the war with him? No, Mr. Sugden's a year or two older. You look the same to me. Has anybody told you you're very outspoken, young lady? I'm paid to talk to the customers. It's part of my job. I think you might be in danger of overdoing it. You've left some chips down there on the floor. He did it. He's been chucking them. Oh, he's only a baby. Hey, how's he been? Oh, making your present felt. I remember one particular occasion with our Tracy in a supermarket. I could have killed her. Ken's got the advantage over you, though. He can give the child back to his parents. I'm his father. His father? Yes, amazing though that may seem. And before you ask, he didn't come out of a test tube. I'm sorry, I just presumed. Actually, I should know better. I was born of elderly parents myself. Really? Um, shall we be going? We're eating a meal later, um, just about to choose the wine. Why don't you join us? Just bought our dinner. Another time, maybe. Maybe. Bye. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Again. She won't be long. When I were a lass, they docked you half a day, no matter what time you got in. Mother, Sally is coping with two children on her own. The least we can do is have a bit of sympathy for her. Sympathy doesn't help anybody. Any road, this is a business, not a registered charity. Oh, morning. Oh, morning. Hey, hey, Daniel. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I don't know. Sweets, chocolates must be the first words that came out of him. Hey, come on, you. Let me go and see oh, if thanks, I can find thanks. something for you. <laughs> Oh, well, he won't eat any of the food that I make for him. Perhaps he'll settle down when he gets used to you. I hope so. Well, they like routine, you know, little ones. Happen you could have him down here more often. No, oh, this is supposed to be a one-off, Maud. But you'll have more time, won't you, now you're retired? No, no, on the contrary. Work-wise, I've got to run even faster just to stand still. Oh, thanks, my <laughs> no, Miracle worker. Yeah. Oh, go. sorry, oh, Daniel. Oh. How much do I owe you for that? <laughs> 75p. Oh, 75p. There we are. And worth you. every penny. There, Thanks Daniel. very much. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye, Daniel. Bye bye. Oh, Sally, could I have a word? No, I'm sorry, Ken. I'm in a rush. Hi. Hi. What's on for today, then? Well, I think we'll start at the park, tire him out as much as possible, and go from there. Are you managing? You look worn out. No, 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 no problem, no. He's just uh, he's got an incredible amount of energy, you know. It's hard keeping up, isn't it? Anyway, I'll press on. Bye. Bye. I had no idea. It's beautiful. This garden takes some looking after, but I just don't have the time. I would have sold up and moved somewhere smaller, but... Uh... Ah! British Airways 737 to Warsaw. Yes. Well, as you can see, it's handy for the airport. <laughs> it's like another world, this, isn't it? Weatherfield might be a million miles away. Yes, but the trouble is... There aren't any corner shops around here, Deirdre. Well, 
What are you after? A uh, corkscrew. Oh. Oh, you never told me you had lodgers. Mr. and Mrs. Jenkins. Oh, previous owners. They promised to have the mail redirected, but um, it keeps on arriving. Thanks. You know, it's a shame. A house like this, the garden. It's uh, a pity it's not lived in more than it is. Yes, I've been thinking about that. I thought I might try and get one of these, um, house sitters. Oh, I'm glad I caught you. I'm trying to get some help with Daniel. I'm sorry, can I got to get back? I told Bill I'd only be half an hour. Yeah, but, but could your child man to take Daniel along with Sophie and Rosie? I doubt it. She's got her hands full. Oh, could you ask her? No, I'm sorry, Ken. I can't. Anyway, I thought you had plenty of free time on your hands now. Hey, 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 hey. Now then. <laughs> oh, oh, I've had him all day. Never mind. He'll be all right when he gets back to his mum. This is Daniel Roy. Yes. Yeah, his mum's Denise. She lives in Scotland. Oh, right, yes. Um, I'm sorry. You know, it would be nice if, um, instead of a house sitter, I had you to come back to here. Say something. <clears throat> I thought you'd never ask. I know you've only just moved. Oh, don't worry about that. You do know what you're letting yourself in for. You'll have to spend time here on your own. As long as you're coming back, I don't mind. As soon as we get back from holiday, then. Oh, Denise, uh, yeah, look, um, <clears throat> no, 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 there's nothing wrong. Um, I don't even worry about it, it's just that, well, Daniel's missing you, and uh, I think it'd be a good idea if I brought him back sooner rather than later. Oh, Emily. Is everything all right, Ken? We heard the most awful noises last night. Crying and screaming. I'm sorry, I just can't keep him quiet. In fact, I've only just got him up to sleep now. Mr. Sugden was saying it's getting to be a rare thing these days, a good night's sleep. What with Battersby's next door. I promise it won't happen again. Well, I said, I'm sure Ken's trying his best with little Daniel. After all, you've brought up children before. But obviously I've lost the knack now, haven't I? I'm only asking out of concern, Ken. I'm sorry, Emily, I'm sorry. It's just... I just don't know how to cope with him. Ken, it's me. Deirdre? Hi. The uh, door was on the latch. Oh, yeah, I must have left it. Uh, sorry. Time for a chat, or not? <clears throat> you don't mind a mess. Where's Daniel? Finally got him off to sleep upstairs. I, uh, I saw Emily. She said you'd had a rotten night. <laughs> Did she tell you what a useless father I am? No. She told me how sorry she felt for you. Really? Well, I hope you've not come to offer me sympathy as well, because I don't think I'm in the mood. I just wanted to see if there was anything I could do to help, that's all. Thought you were getting yourself ready to fly off on holiday. Ah, uh, tomorrow, but uh, we're not flying anywhere. What do you mean? Well, we changed our plans. We're going on a driving holiday to Scotland. Scotland? Huh. Or whatever happened to Thailand or whatever? Oh, we decided against a long haul. You know, I mean, for John, it's too much like work. And what about for you? Oh, I'm happy just to see a bit of scenery and get away from here. Well, I might pass you on the motorway then on the way back. Sorry? I rang Denise last night. I told her I'm taking Daniel back out there this evening. What? I thought you had him for the whole fortnight. Yeah, well... 
I'll have to change my plans, too. But why, Ken? Because he doesn't want to be with me, Deirdre. Last night, he was calling for his daddy. I said, I'm your daddy, Daniel. But he didn't want me. He wanted his real daddy. Yeah, that's how he thinks now. I'm not his daddy. That, that Brian Dunkley is. Is he still asleep? Like a tiny little log. I just hope he stays that way while I move him to the car. Well, I've packed his toys in your hold all. Thanks, Deirdre. And I made some tea. You must think I'm completely pathetic. No! It's a tough job looking after a toddler on your own. But it didn't used to be, did it? I coped very well before she stole him from me. I know. Look, I'm sure she hasn't tried to turn him against you, Ken. Then why did she decide to move so far away? She didn't have to, did she? Well, that was Brian's decision, wasn't yeah, it? she had a voice. She could have made it easier for me. And she's been fine about you going up there for weekends. <coughs> Perhaps you could do that more now you've got the time. What for? I drive up there, I still know where to take him on my own. You can take him out, can't you? I mean, like a real dad, dear. You're not some stranger that he goes for walks with. I knacker myself on the motorway just to watch him be with them. Well, don't give up hope, Ken. What's to hope for? Lost him, Deirdre. And here I am, the last few hours with him, praying that he'll stay asleep. Listen, he's only two and a half. When he's older, he'll naturally be curious to see you. He will, I'm sure he will. And you can be a proper dad to him, can't you? Now is when I need him, Deirdre. Now there's nothing else. Right, you get him strapped in. I'll start loading his stuff up. Deirdre. Ah, uh, Ken's taking Daniel back up to Scotland. Already? Yeah, I think it's for the best. He looks like he's a peaky, poor little chap. Has he been eating properly? Ken's tried everything. He's just not himself. Probably be better when he comes to stay when he's older. Mm. Right, OK then. I'm so sorry, Ken. I hope you're not taking him back because of me. Oh, no, Emily. No, no, Deirdre's right. He's too young to cope with all this coming and going. Well, drive safely, won't you? I will. Yeah, you keep your mind on the road, especially on the way back. All right, well, I hope you enjoy Scotland more than I will. It shouldn't be hard. I'll see you when I get back. Take good care. Thanks, both of you. I don't know how he's going to get over this. I know. He's coming back to an empty life. That's what worries me. Now, how shall I phrase this, ladies? Um, shall I sit at the top or at the bottom? Sales technique, you see. You can't say no, can you? Is that a challenge, Gary? Or are you asking nicely? You're supposed to say one or... I was asking nicely. Well, then sit down and have a crisp. Oh, we were just talking about Ken. He's had his little son Daniel to stay with him, and it's been a nightmare for him. For us next door, too. Crying and screaming night after night. He just couldn't settle. That's... that's not common, though, is it? Well, that's why they call it the Terrible Twos, isn't it? Eh? They could call them all terrible years, though, couldn't they? From what you see of parents struggling to cope. Well, once was enough for me. I think I'd sooner dig roads than go back to bringing up a baby. I mean it, It's John. Oh, hi. Come on up. Hi. So, what brings you here at nine o'clock on a Sunday morning? Oh, it's not a bad time, is it? Oh, it's never a bad time. Mm. I just wasn't expecting you. Oh, well, it's been quite a night. We were supposed to land at six. There was an air traffic dispute, we were rerouted over North Africa, and it put nearly two hours on the flight time. Where are you flying from? Jakarta. It's a bit hairy, actually. 
We were in Libyan airspace for a while. No. Hmm? Even had a MiG fighter pull up alongside us. You didn't? I was just checking us out, making sure we were just freight. <sighs> anyway, we finally landed. I saw the time and I thought to myself, I wonder if Deirdre fancies joining me for breakfast. Oh, that's a lovely idea. <laughs> Hey, there's only one snag, though. Deirdre hasn't got so much as a loaf in the house. Well, that's all right. We'll go out. No, no. You sit down. I'll nip to the corner shop. You sure? Yeah, positive. Make yourself at home. It'll only be five minutes. Is it uh, all right if I make a quick call while you're out? I have to check in with the chief, see if he wants me to log a special report. Yeah, feel free. Hi. Yeah, Cheryl, it's me. Uh, look, I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you there was an overing last night. Yeah, yeah, it was a customer's fault. Anyway, it means the till's going to be down by 4 99 You know, it, it seems ages since we were in Scotland. Does it? Well, I uh, hardly seem to have seen you since we got back. Yeah, well, I'm sorry about that. Oh, no, don't apologise. Just that so you get used to being with someone 24 hours a day and then suddenly... Barely get a phone call all week. Occupational hazard. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. Still, it'll, uh, it'll be different when I move in with you, won't it? I'll still be a pilot. I'll still be away half the time. Yeah, yeah, I know, but when you are home... Um, did I tell you I uh, rang the landlord and uh, gave notice on this place? No, you didn't. When for? End of the month. Ah, right. Well, you, you did say I should move in as soon as we got back from Scotland. No, it's just there's work needs doing. Oh. What kind of work? Rewiring. The floorboards will have to come up. The place is going to be a bit of a bomb site. Oh, well, um, sure I can stop on here for a bit longer. No, no. The end of the month is fine. Cheers. So, have you moved into the mansion yet? It's not a mansion. Oh, no. Just a humble ten-up, ten-down. Please. <laughs> hey, you're moving into a great big house with a gorgeous pilot. At least let me tease you about it. Yeah, well, don't get too excited. I haven't actually moved in yet. You're not getting cold feet. I'm not, no. I'm not so sure about John, though. But he asked you to move in with him. Well, maybe he's gone off the idea. Has he said anything? Not in so many words, no, but... Oh, something just doesn't feel quite right. How do you mean? Maybe it was Scotland. They say you really get to know somebody when you go on holiday with them. But you said you had a wonderful time. I had a wonderful time. Maybe he came back desperate to get rid of me. Well, if that's the case, why was he knocking on your door at nine o'clock on a Sunday morning? I don't know. Perhaps he wants to let me down gently. I think your imagination has been working overtime. Oh, please. I just can't believe all this is happening to me. I'm just so scared he'll go off me. Don't be daft. If I can't make a go of it with John, I'll never make a go of it with anybody. Deirdre, you should be talking to him about this, not me. Oh, I don't want to seem like one of those clingy, neurotic women. That'll definitely frighten him off. It's a big step moving in with somebody. So you tell him. He'll only go through with it if he's 100% certain that that's what he wants. See, of course I'm not having second thoughts. Whatever gave you that idea? Well, since we got back from Scotland, you barely mentioned it. Well, we've hardly seen each other. And then this morning, when I said I'd given notice on this place, you, you hummed and art. Yes, well, there was a very good reason for that. Look, if you don't want me to move in with you, that's absolutely fine. <laughs> I was thinking of having the whole place redecorated from top to bottom before you move in. It's gorgeous as it is. Oh, I want you to feel like you're moving into a new home. Our new home. And you haven't changed your mind? <gasps> as far as I'm concerned, the sooner you move in, the better. Do you really mean that? Yeah. Well, why don't you move in this week? Tomorrow. <laughs> Why don't you pack a bag come with me tonight? Well, I can't get things organised that quickly. Why not? Well, just because you've paid the rent doesn't mean you have to stay here till the bitter end. Well, I suppose I could have it all arranged by the end of the week. Well, at the end of the week it is. And are you sure this is definitely what you want? I have never been more certain of anything in my life. 
Right then. End of the week it is. So, what are you going to do with your day off? The truth? <laughs> well, yes, preferably. I'm going to see my ex-wife. Oh. Oh, yes. I really know how to relax, don't I? I want to see her so I can tell her about us. It's a, a long way to Cornwall, John. Oh, I'm not going to Cornwall. She's up here visiting some friends of ours. Oh, right. Will she be interested? Well, I'm not really fussed if she is or she isn't. It's just in case the two of you ever bump into each other. Uh, John, I'm moving into the house that you two shared. Is she likely to turn up one day? Well, I won't be issuing invitations, if that's what you mean. Just uh, avoiding any unwelcome surprises? Yep. Well, in that case, I think you're right to tell her. If I know anything about ex-wives... Well, let's face it, what don't you know? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm actually beginning to think that Ken is starting to thaw towards me. Oh, I can do without you two becoming best friends. Uh, what will be, will be. <laughs> well, perhaps I should bring Linda back with me. We could introduce them. Oh, yes, very cosy. <laughs> Let's see you later. Yeah, if you're very lucky. Mm -hmm. Begging. This is Rashid, isn't it? Chris, Angie's bloke. Yeah. Hi. Hey, it all happens in here, doesn't it? Yeah. I uh, saw the flat over the bookies advertised in the cabin window and I was wondering uh, how much you're charging. Well, I'm not. I've uh, just agreed to show prospective tenants around. I am living there at the moment, but I'm wanting out of my lease. I don't think he's putting the rent up. So can Angie and I come and see? Yeah, I should be in just after five. Great, thanks. Right. She's had a little girl, I just saw her. She's called a kitty, like my little one. She's so gorgeous. How old's the mum? About 16, 17. Well, how's happened before? At least she hasn't got herself landed with twins. <laughs> oh, should I go? No, you stay put. Right. Hiya, girls. Hi. How was Linda? Can I get a drink first? No. Well, she was, uh, waspish. Oh, she's worried because you've got somebody else, even though she has. Don't worry, I'm the best friend. I get told everything. Well, she asked me if you were pretty, if you were another flight attendant. Another? Well, she was. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I forgot. Now can I get a drink? <laughs> Same again. A please, yeah. Don't worry, it's official. It must be. It's told the ex-wife. Yeah, the air hostess. No. Nope. So what's it like inside the palace? <laughs> Fantastic kitchen, you know, designer kitchen with everything tucked away. Oh. Lovely big sunny lounge, beautiful lawn out the back. But no sign of him anywhere. How do you mean? Well, you know, no no personal bits and pieces lying around. Mind you, he's hardly ever there, is he? Oh, it sounds wonderful. Hey, I've just had a thought. I could show you it. How do you mean? Yeah, we could go there now. I mean, I haven't got any keys or anything, but you could see it from the outside. Hey, I'd love to. Yeah, then you can picture me in it. <laughs> well, what do you think? It's fab! It's a bit up from Coronation Street, isn't it? But most of the time it's just sitting empty, is it? Yeah. What a waste. Oh, I wish I could show you the inside. What make me even more jealous? You're so lucky, dear. Oh, no. I keep pinching myself. Hey, I wish I could meet a fellow like him. Hey, it shows you, though, doesn't it? You never know what's next round the corner. It must be so hard, Ken, after such a busy life. Well, busy but not balanced, you see, Emily. Apparently that's my problem, according to the gurus. No hobbies, no family life, nothing in reserve. Well, I suppose that's what helped me through retirement, having so many interests. Have you thought about taking up writing again? Oh, well, the great novel. Well, or articles, you know. Well, I just don't seem able to concentrate that side of my brain. If I pick up a book, I get restless. No, I think I just need to find something mundane, you know, tide myself over. Well, um, if it wouldn't insult you, Ken, 
Sunliners do need a courier every now and again. Oh? Yeah, just to and fro to the airport. I mean, we usually book a taxi, but I'd sooner we paid you. Oh. Oh. Thanks, Deirdre. I appreciate the thought. Bye. Hi. Bye. Hi. 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 Angie. Excuse me, Hi. Hiya. Listen, Am, it's about the flat. Was that a definite yes you wanted, or are you still making your minds up? Uh, has Chris not got back to you yet? Not yet, no. Oh. Well, you can't really delay, Angie, because uh, I've got a house to move into on Friday. Yeah, yeah, you said. Which is a lot of organisation, as you can imagine. And I'm loath to take the advert down if you can't give me an answer. No, uh, sorry. Um... So, uh, when will I know, then? I'll tell Chris to give you a call tomorrow, let you know one way or the other. Right, I hope it's yes. I'm pretty sure it will be. So, can you let me know first thing? Yes, OK. Oh, and, um... I'm sorry if I detected a bit of a strain between the two of you, but uh, John and I can't wait to share a house together, you know. I'll tell you. Thanks. I was going to fetch him round. You have enough to do. And it's charity shop morning anyway. Hey, where does it all come from, eh? Do clothes breed when you shove them away or what? They do say it's very therapeutic, having a good old clear out. Oh, well, I have one every time I move, which seems to be every other day lately. <laughs> Let's hope this is the last one. You deserve some real security after what you've been through. Is that your roundabout way of saying I've got your approval, Mrs Bishop? You don't need my approval. Well, your blessing then. I mean, let's face it, for the time being, me and John will be living in sin. <laughs> That's the sort of thing Ina Sharples would have said. <laughs> she wasn't the only one. No. I suppose not. Well, those were the rules you were brought up by. It's the way things were. Well, I was worse than most. It's a different world nowadays. Now I'd say there's a lot worse sin than being happy. Thanks, Emily. If I was tut-tutting about it, you'd still be going, <laughs> wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, of course I would, but I'd rather have it this way. Hey, listen, you must come for dinner as soon as I get settled. Get to know John properly. He's a lovely man. Maybe he's got a lovely uncle who could make up a foursome. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for looking after the place again, Barry. It's not to ask. Rubbish. Any special instructions? Well, just the same as last time. Pop in, draw the curtains in the evening, lights on. Trying to keep an eye on the place. Make it seem lived in. We need you back. A uh, week tomorrow. Laura's staying on some others with the children. I'll give her my regards when you speak to her. Well, she really appreciates this. There's been a lot of breakings around here, and it's both her away at the same time. She worries. Well, there's no need, mate. House couldn't be in safer hands. Have a good flight. And go easy on the sake when you get there. I can't stand the stuff. And it seems five minutes since you moved in. Oh, no, I was just saying to Emily, I've had too many flits lately. Yeah, but this one is for all the right reasons. Mm. How's it feel? Truthfully, cloud nine. If I say I'm jealous, is that horrible? No. Yeah, it is. It's not that I don't want it to be happening to you. I just think it'd be nice if it could happen to both of us. <laughs> well, you'd risk it again. After Fraser? Well, yeah. Can't all be duds, can they? John's not. Do you know, you're so smug I could thump oh, you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, if the right person came along and made me glow like you're doing now, I'd risk it like a shot. You don't think I'm crazy, then? What are the alternatives? Playing it safe and ending up an old maid? No. I didn't know what loneliness was till the last couple of years. <sighs> yeah. Oh, Chris, hi. Come on up. Hello. Hi. Sorry to bother you. I was just wondering, when are you actually going? Ah, about tea time. All right, then. Can I move my stuff in after work? Oh, uh, better leave it till tomorrow. The rent starts from then. Right. Why is there any rush? No, I need to get away from my present landlord. Oh, uh, why? What's up with him? What do you mean, apart from the fact he's an arrogant prat who thinks he can pull anything with a pulse? Um, I'll uh, give you the spare keys. I'll push the other one through the letterbox when Thanks. I go. Great. Are the two of you moving in? Just me. Oh, well, I hope you'll be very happy here. Well, I'm bound to be. It's a Barnes-free zone. I can't claim to know him, but he seems a decent chap. She dotes on him. That's the main thing. 
picking up a dashing pilot in a singles bar. It's like something you read about in a steamy paperback, isn't it? world we live in, it's usually local milkman or something. Eyes met over a pint of semi-skimmed. That's about as romantic as it gets. Well, in those books, there's always a happy ending. Yeah, well, it's good to know it can happen in real life, eh? For once. Well, I uh, couldn't let you go without saying goodbye. <laughs> I'm only going to Cheadle. Well, I'm not talking about geography. I know. <sighs> End of an era. Our era ended a long time ago, Ken. Well, not completely. The bonds are always there, weren't they? Shared history, mutual support. Tracy, Samir, Denise, Daniel. Well, they're not going to disappear just because I'm not living round the corner. No. No. Anyway, it's time I grew up and sort of my own two feet, isn't it? Fact is, I should be doing what you're doing, really. Moving away, fresh start. Well, then do it. I think the moment's been and gone. Oh, maybe if you... if you meet someone. <laughs> I did. Not all women are like Denise, Ken. Oh, thank God. Anyway, you're a better picker than I am, I'll give you that. Samir was a good bloke. And John seems to be... Uh... Another good bloke. Anyway, uh, I hope you'll be very happy. Together, you deserve to be. Thanks. Oh, thanks, Ken. Oh, yeah. that'll be oh, him. Right, well, I was going, anyway. Hi. Hi. Ken's here. Hi. This now still not finished. It's been non-stop visitors all morning. Anybody would think I was flipping emigrating. Well, it shows how highly your friends think of you. Either that or they're making sure I really am going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'll be off anyway. Uh, hope the boob goes well. well. It's all under control. No glitches expected. No, oh, he can't afford any glitches in his job. No. Right, well, bye. 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 Well, do you want me to, um, carry you over the threshold? <laughs> Not unless you plan on giving yourself a hernia. Are you disparaging my manly physique, madam? No, just protecting my interests. <laughs> <laughs> John, what's wrong? I don't believe this. What is it? It's from Linda, my ex, telling me, in a word, that the house is in her name and she's taking possession. Well, she can't do that, can she? Well, she seems to think so. She's changed the blasted locks. The lousy, rotten... Oh, sweetheart. I'm sorry. I wanted this to be so special and I've really blown it for you, haven't I? The tree. I'm so very sorry. It's not your fault. Call me. It's not your fault. She's not getting away with it. The agreement was I got the house, including the mortgage, and she got whatever savings we had. Well, she's obviously had second thoughts. I don't care what she's had. And I don't care what right she thinks she has over that house. What she doesn't have the right to do is humiliate me like that. Well, you always said she was unpredictable. Oh, she's a mad woman. Well, you've seen for yourself now. I mean, all right, suppose she has convinced herself that she's had a raw deal. Why doesn't she come and talk to me about it? Write to me, phone me. Oh, no. She has to sneak in and change the locks. Well, two can play at that game. I'm going to go back to that house, and then I'm going to break in. And then I'm going to do exactly what she's done. Change the locks, stick a note on the door saying, up yours. You're not serious. <laughs> you just watch me. Give me a couple of hours, we'll have you moved in like we should have been doing last night. Uh, yeah, but, uh, hang on. What? Well, you break in, change the locks, move me in. Yeah. And you fly off somewhere and I'm sat there waiting for this woman that you tell me is mad to turn up and start trying to smash her way in. Yes. No thanks. We can't let her dictate to us like that. Well, actually, I can, yes. Well, I'll do everything. I'm not asking you to climb in through any windows. Or no! 
Look at it from my point of view. If Linda's gonna fight you for that house, it's the last place on earth I wanna be. Fine. Then I will be humiliated. Well, don't be on my account. <laughs> I've lived through worse. At least I've still got this place. Chris wasn't due to move in till today, anyway. So what's gonna happen? Well, this is just a temporary setback, isn't it? You're gonna sell the house, or whatever, and then we're gonna try again, aren't we? Yeah, definitely. And Chris is just gonna have to do the same as I'm doing and stop where he is for the time being. See you then. Yeah, thanks, Des. Yeah, cheers, mate. Oh, no. Look, I'm sorry. Wait. You'll have to go back. Why? What's up? I'm not moving anymore. I can't. It's all had to be cancelled. Oh. But why? John's ex-wife has made a claim on the house and... Oh, I'm sorry. I picture today as rather different. I know. Anyway, I'd better get going. I want to call in on Linda on the way to the airport. See if I can renegotiate her way back into my own house. Well, if you can't, promise me you'll come back here. You sure? Of course. In fact, I hope she's really awful to you. I hope she never lets you near that house again. Then you'll have to come back here. You know, I think that's exactly what's going to happen. So when shall I expect you? Around midnight. Great. Hey, and you tell Linda we don't care what she's done. We're still going to move in together. It's just going to be here instead of at your house. OK. <laughs> yeah. Hiya. A glass of red, please, and... Uh... Oh, I'll have a glass of red as well, please, love. Two of those, then, please. Hi. Hi. You uh, may have noticed I'm still here. Oh, no shame in that. I'm here all the time. Uh, no, no, I mean, my move has had to be delayed. Apparently, his wife still has some claim on the house. What, one of those ex-husband and wife things? Yeah. Mm, very cool. Right, it's my round. Put that out for me, thanks. No, yeah. me neither, love. I'm off in a minute. Thanks, sweetheart. Okay. So, we get there and his keys don't work and there's a note on the front door from his wife saying that she's changed the locks and put the house up for sale. No! Well, this morning he was all for ignoring her and breaking in, but I told him I don't want any part of that. Oh, you don't? So, I'm back where I started. The only difference is he's having to move in with me because he can't get back in his house, can he? Oh, clever. <laughs> well, you have to be, haven't you? <laughs> oh, no, I did feel sorry for him, though. I mean, there he is, trying to move me in, and his ex-wife puts the kibosh on it. Hey, do you think that's why she did it? Because of you? Oh, I'm positive it is. I don't think he realises that, though. He thinks it's all to do with money. Oh, always do, don't they? Men. <laughs> you stop, you what? <laughs> Love's young dream, eh? Mm, what was it like? <laughs> You're never too old, Ken. So, still nothing on the job front. Oh, it's the old story. When you don't want something, it falls into your lap, and when you're desperate, it never does. Mm -hmm. You, uh, you were kind enough to offer if anything came up on Sunland. Well, it hasn't yet, Ken, but I promise you, when it does, you'll be top of my list. Unless... No, no, you... No, go on. Well, I wouldn't be able to pay you very much. What's the job, Deirdre? Just picking somebody up from the airport. It's a boring taxi job, and I know you've done your time as a cabbie. No, Deirdre, I'd be very interested. OK, fine. Right. No, you see... Now, her name's Mrs Aristidou. Her English is very good, so I'm told. So just make her feel at home, and she wants drop-in at the Midland Hotel. All right. And here's your 15 quid. Oh, thank you very much. So, uh, how do I know which one is her? Oh, you have to hold a card up with her name on it. You're kidding. No, no. Yeah, I've made one up for you. Oh, what if she doesn't see me? Well, just make sure you stand near the front. I think I'm going to feel silly. Why? Just pretend you're in a James Bond film or oh, something. I think that'll make it worse. Oh, if it's any consolation, Ken, I'm really grateful to you for doing this. Well, I just hope your boyfriend doesn't see me. Ah, uh, unlikely. He's flying to Cape Town. Oh, right now. All right, he's flying to Cape Town. I'm topping up to the airport for 15 quid. Oh. See you later. See ya.
I thought it was you. Oh, hello, Ken. I was just... Deirdre said you were flying to Cape Town today. Oh, yeah, I, I am. Well, I was. It's been cancelled. Oh, oh. Yeah, I was just killing a bit of time. Yeah, they often keep the nicer patterns on the bottom that you don't see on display. Do they? So I uh, always look there first. Oh. oh. Yeah, I often kill time here, looking around the shops. What's this? Oh, uh, oh I'm uh, just meeting someone from Athens. Uh, it's a favour for Deirdre. Oh, right. Well, Arrivals is back along there. Yes, I know. I'm early. <laughs> I'm killing time, too. <laughs> right, right. Anyway, nice to see you. Yes. Yes, and you. Bye, then. Right. Bye. Bye-bye. Hello, yes, uh, it's uh, John Lindsay here. Can I speak to Deirdre, please? Right. OK, uh, well, can I leave a message? Can you tell her that my flight to Cape Town has been cancelled and I'll, um, I'll see her at her flat later tonight? Do you think it's a bit odd? What? Well, OK, I mean, she wants him to sell the house for whatever reason, that's fair enough, but, well, trying to lock him out. That's nutty. What's he meant to do? Yeah, well, I get the impression she is a bit, uh, you know... Ah. Well, he's even nuttier, then, for letting her get away with it. Well, you know, my theory. Now, it sounds to me as if she's a bit of a handful. Yeah, but he should stand up to her. He's necking a rod for his own back, and it's you that'll suffer. Well, it is. I mean, what about his clothes? Where are they? Are they all still locked in the house? I don't know. He hasn't said. The more you think about it, it's mad, isn't it? You dad. Hi. Hi. Got your message. <laughs> ah. So, how are things on the house front? No. Oh. I don't want to think about it. I've got enough on. The flight to Cape Town has been transferred to tonight now instead. Oh, no. Yeah, I'm sorry. So, at the most, we've got till half ten. Oh, well. Better make the most of it. <laughs> oh. Oh, I was flicking through your album. I didn't think you'd mind. No, no, I don't. You know, you'd have got on with Sam here. He'd have liked you. Would he? He liked everyone. You know, I sometimes... Deirdre. I sometimes feel guilty because I'm so happy. Oh, come on. You mustn't torture yourself with thoughts like that. I mean, you'd have been just as happy if you still had him and never met me. Yeah. Wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, I would. Oh, I don't know. Maybe that's why I feel guilty. Maybe I'm happier. Contingency plan. Well, might be worth looking into, just in case I hit a brick wall with the dragon lady. Are you sure this meeting's such a good idea? I mean, you did say you never wanted to set eyes on her again. Well, I don't. But it'll be worth it if it gets this mess sorted. What's she asking for it, do you know? I have no idea. Got it nice inside, has she? Plenty of decent bits and bobs, I should imagine. She looks the type who'd have a few good pots. Be like that. I still think you'd have been better doing this through a solicitor. Well, I'd prefer to keep them out of it if I can. Anyway, the bottom line is, Linda has now decided she wants to sell the house and split the proceeds. What, you mean she's not going to live there after all that? Yeah, real dog in the manger stuff, I know. She doesn't want it, but she doesn't want us to have it. Well, at least this way I might come out of it with some cash. Is your egg all right? Hmm. Perfect. Not as perfect as the one you'd be having tomorrow morning, I expect. Deirdre, you make better scrambled egg than I've had anywhere in the world, and that is the honest truth. Well, I find that hard to believe. No, no, it's a fact. <laughs> Most chefs never seem to whisk it well enough, or they serve it too runny. You do it just the way I like. I just mix a bit of milk in, like my mum taught me. Mm. 
And have you passed the secret on to your own daughter? Oh, yes. Actually, um, I was thinking, you know, when you come back from Singapore, I, uh, I might invite Tracy up for a few days, you know, introduce you. Yeah, great, I'd love to meet her. Would you really? Yes, of course I would. I'd love to be more a part of your family. Right, then, I'll do it. I'll invite her up next week. She knows of my existence, then? Well, she knows I've met somebody very nice. Hmm. Oh, uh, will you be free this Wednesday evening, Ken? Only Rita's giving me a little going-away party and I'd love you to come. Oh, Wednesday? Yeah, I'd be delighted, maybe. Uh, fine, what time? About six o'clock. Fine, fine, lovely. And um, will you two be free to join me in an early evening drink tonight? Uh, oh, I'm sure we'd love to. Uh, not for me, Ken. Sorry. Accounts to do. Accounts? Bits and pieces. But don't let uh, that put you two off. Oh, we won't. Well, I'll see you there then, shall I? Right, yeah. Well, uh, see you later. See you. Bye. Oh, Ken. Oh, hi. I've been trying to ring you. Oh? Mrs. Aristidou, we've had a fax from Athens. She's had to book onto a later flight. Mm -hmm. So it'll be one thirty now. Can you still pick her up? Fine, no problem. Oh, great. Sorry to muck you about. No, that's fine, dearie. I'm just very glad to have the work. Bye. Bye. Sorry I wasn't there when you dropped off Mrs Aristide. I hope she didn't bore you to death on the drive. Uh, no, 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 she'll be very entertaining. Oh, it was all right then. You'll be up for more? Of course. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. So, uh, John's not with you tonight then? No, he's in Singapore. Well, he will be soon. He went this morning. Singapore? Yeah. I won't see him now till Wednesday. I'm missing him already. Sounds like you're in a bit deep then. Mm -hmm. It does, doesn't it? Oh, I'll not kid you, Ken. I am head over heels. And the wonderful thing is, he feels the same way about me. How can you tell? Oh, come on, Ken. You've really forgotten what it's like to be in love. Oh, morning. Hi, Ken. Hi. You all right? Uh, yeah, fine. You? Yeah, OK, OK. Um, have you heard from John? Yes, he rang last night, as it happens. From Singapore? Well, that is where he was flying to, yeah. Anything else you want to know? Oh, sorry, no, no. I'm just making conversation now. I won't ask again. Bye. Uh, bye. Bye. This your bag, sir. Thank you very much. And, uh, three pounds into your seat. OK. Just wondering how much these hankies were. Three pounds fifty. Smart on the back. Of course. Yeah. I could have sworn I just saw someone I know. Oh really? Yeah, a chap who just left. White shirt, tie. Mr. Lindsay. Ah, is that his name? Yeah. Well, it's not who I thought it was. I should have realised when I saw his face. But from the side, he's the uh, image of someone at work. It's weird when that happens. No, if he was in a white shirt, that's Mr. Lindsay, my boss. The manager. That's right. He's very nice. I'm sure. So, do you want these then? Oh, um, no, I don't think I'll bother. Thanks. Thanks for stopping by, Emily. Well, there's nothing the matter, is there? Well, actually, yes. Uh, take a seat. Well, I hope it's nothing too bad. I've had one upsetting experience already today. Oh, what? I saw Don Brennan in the cemetery. 
No. Oh, oh, he wasn't violent or anything. Just, uh, well, mad, I suppose. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, can I get you a drink? Well, I don't normally in the middle of the day, but uh, do you mind? Not a bit. Uh, only got brandy, I'm afraid. Well, just the small one, Ken. <laughs> did you, uh, did you tell the police? Oh, yes, they're out looking for him. Anyway, what's your problem? Well, no, it's not a problem for me, it's Deirdre. You know, she's got a new man in her life. The pilot, yes. Oh, don't tell me. You've seen him with another woman. If only it were that simple. Well, go on. I found out what his real job is. Well, you mean he's not a pilot? I'm afraid not. He runs a tie shop on the airport precinct. Doubt he's ever flown a plane in his life. And you're sure it was him? Positive. Seen him there before, a few weeks ago. And you didn't say anything? Oh, no, I spoke to him. He said he was buying a tie before flying off somewhere. How do you know he wasn't doing that today? Because the assistant told me who he was. Oh, how very bizarre. Oh, it makes me shiver just thinking about it. More brandy? No, no, this is masses. Of course, the, uh, the question is, do I tell Deirdre? Oh, you must. Well, she'll say I'm jealous, of course, and trying to break them up. Oh, that doesn't matter. If you're sure of your facts, this is an enormous lie he's telling. I mean, what else is there that she doesn't know? Well, I mean, this is it. He could be dangerous. Oh, you've got to tell her, Ken. And the sooner, the better. I'm still worried, Kenneth, about Mrs. Bishop. Why? What's she done now? Well, she keeps changing the colour on the television and for forgets she's done it. Are you sure there's something wrong, Percy? I was with her this afternoon and she was as bright as a button. What's she drinking? Well, yes, as it happened. Just as I thought. But only because I offered her one. I mean, you're not trying to say she turned into an alcoholic, are you? Then why is it there was an empty vodka bottle hidden down the side of the chair, eh? Go on, answer me that. Well, I'll bury the mine, Percy, OK? But right now I've got other things to worry about. I will! Hi, Ken. Hi. Uh, Deirdre! Um, I was hoping to see you. Uh, what if I got a quiet word? Yeah, sure. What's up? Well, uh, I, uh, <clears throat> I don't want to talk here in the street. Uh, could you come into the house for a few minutes? Oh, well, actually, I'm in a bit of a rush right now. I've got to get ready for Mavis's farewell do. Are you going to that? Well, uh, yes, I am. Well, I'll tell me then. Oh, Emily, come in, come in. Oh, good. So it was ready on time then. Yes, I picked it up at the framing shop this afternoon. Go, 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 go in then. Okay. Um, as you can see, I'm just in the middle of getting ready, so if you give me about five minutes. I'll oh, know. yes, of course. But by the way, have you spoken to Deirdre yet? Oh, about Lindsay and me? No, no. I tried to get a word this afternoon, but she was in a hurry. To be honest with you, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to broach it. I mean, how on earth am I going to tell her that this chap that she thinks is a pilot is a shop manager with a passion for fancy dress. It is awkward, Ken. I see that, but I think you do have to tell her. Oh, I will, I will. Anyway, make yourself comfortable, Emily. I won't be longer. Uh, have a brandy. Yes, right. Oh, uh, <coughs> Deirdre's going to be at this farewell party, so if I get a chance, I'll talk to her then. Right. That'll be Percy. Come in, Percy. Yes, Thank sir. You. Thank you. Right. Well, I think we're all set then. Emily's got the present, so we could walk over to Rita's, if you like. Unless you'd like a drink first, Percy. A brandy, perhaps? Oh, no, thank you. As it happens, Ken, the brandy's all gone. Are you sure that sherry isn't too sweet, Emily? No, no, it's fine. Because <laughs> I myself would have provided medium sherry. Good, although it's meant to be my party. As usual, I was overborn. Mm. Emily, is it medium sherry you like? Uh, no, no, I, I'm quite happy, really. <laughs> because we've all kinds of sherry. In fact, we drink of every kind anyone's likely to ask for, plus a few that they're not. Well, that isn't my fault, Rita. Did I say it was? Did I even hint it was a fault at all? Did I even say it was anybody's fault? Oh, that's what I've had to put up with, year after year after year. Well, I hope
always thought you and Rita got on remarkably well. <laughs> Only because I've always kept the peace. I doubt if anybody else would have done it. She's only nice, you see, as long as she's getting her own way. How I've restrained myself, I do not know. It amazes me that I haven't so much as clouted her with a rolled-up copy at Woman's Own. Oh. Well, who do you think? World's champion, Winger. Can I interest you in a medium, Sherry? Uh, only if you've run out of gin. Oh, no, we've plenty. And I'm going to join you in a very large vodka. Oh. Uh, Between us, Percy, I'm rather worried about Emily's... Um, yeah, well, tendency. How do you mean? Well, that bottle of brandy. It was over half full last time I saw it. I certainly didn't empty it. Well, how can you believe me then? When I tell you I found bottles stuffed down the armchair. Rita. Hi. Hello. Yes, how nice to see oh, you again. Oh, look, I'm really sorry about the work gear. I had to come straight from the airport. Deirdre said I mustn't be late. Well, I told him he'd miss a damn good party. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'll just go and say hello to Mavis. All right. Well, now, can I get you a drink? Um, well, uh, just a beer, I'm afraid. I have to fly again tomorrow night. It's not all glamour, is it? No, I'm afraid not. <laughs> <laughs> Evening, Captain Lindsay. Ah, oh, hi. Um, just John will do. Captain sounds a bit too important. Oh, right, right. Much turbulence about at the moment in your line of business? Um, well, nothing to write home about. <laughs> uh, excuse me, I'd better go and join Deirdre. I don't want this to go any further, Mr. Sugden. Between us, I'm rather worried about Ken. Oh, all right. I rely on your discretion so I can tell you. He seems to be drinking quite heavily these days. Well, somebody is. That I do know. Yes. Mm. Okay, right. Um, right, could I have a bit of hush, please? Uh, could I have a, your attention, please? We're here to say goodbye to Mavis. Well, no, 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 I take that back. No, we're here to say au revoir and see you soon. Because you know, Mavis, we're all coming to stay in that boarding house. <laughs> <laughs> it's a guest house. Oh, sorry, sorry, guest house. Anyway, we'll be there. Not all at the same time, but we'll be there. So uh, it's not really goodbye. All the same. We're going to miss you. Yeah. 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 We'll miss seeing you in the Rovers, and we'll miss your friendly face behind the counter in the cabin. Which brings me to the point that, of course, the one who will obviously miss you most of all is Rita. Now, as your friends, we uh, also like to think that you will miss us. Oh, yes, I will. I will. And then, obviously, the one that you will miss the most will be Rita. So, Mavis, as a uh, memento of your life here, uh, Betty, will you yes. do the honour? Yes. Um, we'd like you to set this with love from all of us. There you go. Oh. oh, thank you. Is, is it a picture? <laughs> well, it's not a milk jug, is it? <laughs> uh, is it? Um, I hope you like it. Um. Oh! oh. oh. Well, that would take them some time ago. I mean, you're both a bit older now, aren't you? Everybody's a bit older, Audrey, except you. Oh, who took the picture? <laughs> Ernest, my late husband. He was a photographer. He was a good one and all. Yes. Oh. I'm sorry, Rita. I've been a bit awkward just recently. I am sorry. Oh, no. no, it were me. No, no, no it was no, me. It were no, it was me. Hey. <laughs> We'll compromise. It were both of us. Are we still pals? Oh, yes. <laughs> and we always will be. Yeah. Are you sure you don't want to lift? Uh, no, thanks. I need the exercise. OK. Well, um, see you around seven. Mm. Bye, love. Fly carefully. I will. <laughs> Morning. morning! Morning! You haven't said anything yet, then? Oh, why should I? Look at her, she's happy enough. But it's false happiness if it's based on a lie. What, you think she'd be better off knowing the truth than being miserable? And blaming me. Not drinking? Uh, can't afford it. Thank you, love. Right, thanks. Thank you. Uh, it occurred to me this morning, supposing Deirdre already knows he's not a pilot, supposing she's in on the lie. Why would she go along with something like that? Well, perhaps she thinks it impresses people, or she likes men in uniform. Well, maybe he persuaded her to go along with it, so she's doing that because she's frightened of losing him if she doesn't. No? 
Well then, maybe it's just me trying to find excuses for not telling him. Are you absolutely sure of what you saw? I mean, it couldn't just have been somebody who looked like him. Mm, not unless he's got a twin brother. Well... Oh, come on, Emily. Now we're both trying to find excuses for not telling him. If the roles were reversed and you were in her shoes, mm -hmm. wouldn't you want her to tell you? Well, no, I don't think I would. What? You'd be happy to live with a lie. Yeah, but that's my point, isn't it? I wouldn't know that it was a lie. That's what... Before you start, Ken, this isn't going to be a lecture about John, is it? Not, uh, no, no, no. Oh, good. Well, so long as it's not, uh, sit down. No, 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 it's all right. Uh, no, what it is, uh, remember about a week ago I went to the airport for you to pick up that Greek woman? Yeah. yeah. Well, while I was there, I happened, uh, by chance, I happened to see John. This is about him. Yeah, but let me just tell no, you. No, Ken, I've told you, I don't want you sticking your nose in. OK, you saw him. So what? What was he doing? Chatting up an air hostess or something? Is that what you were going to tell me? Well, don't, because I don't want you interfering in my life. He was in a shop, a shop that sells ties. He was working there. <laughs> working there? What's that supposed to mean? Well, just that. He was selling ties. And then I thought, hang on a minute, this isn't right. I mean, he's supposed to be a pilot. Ken, what are you it, trying it, to no, say? No, I thought, hang on a minute. This isn't right. What is the pilot doing working in a tie shop? So, and you're not going to like this one, Ben. Oh, am I not? What a surprise. Earlier this week, I went back to the airport. I thought I'll have another look, see if he's still there. What, spying on him, you mean? I said you wouldn't like it. And what was he doing this time? Working behind a bar? Selling the big issue? Still selling ties. Oh. Only this time, I managed to have a quiet word with one of the other people who worked in the shop. And do you want to know what she said? Not really, no. He said, Mr Lindsay is the shop manager. Is that it? Well, I haven't said anything about it before because, well, quite frankly, I didn't know what to do for the best, whether to just keep quiet or I didn't even know you didn't know already. What I know already is that John doesn't work in a shop selling ties or anything else. He's a pilot. Yeah, fine. Well, he is. I mean, you've seen him. All right, not actually flying planes, but you've seen him wearing the uniform, for goodness sake. And have you seen him actually flying planes? Because I've seen him actually selling ties. Oh, have you? Yes. Yes, well, there's two explanations for that. What? Either you're lying through your teeth, or you've made a mistake. You thought you saw John, and in actual fact, you saw somebody else. Somebody else called Lindsay? Remember, I spoke to the assistant. Yeah, all right, then. Somebody else called Lindsay. Why not? Maybe it's his cousin. Maybe that's why he looks so much like him. Oh, so he has a cousin who sells ties at the airport? Well, I he? don't know. I've never asked him. Deirdre, I'm sorry. It wasn't his cousin. It was him. No. Don't be sorry. Because I'm telling you, it wasn't him. Look... I'm not just going to keep on saying the same thing. Good. It was John I saw. Oh, so you are going to just keep on saying the same thing? It was definitely him, and he was selling tyres. Now, if you don't want to believe that, fine. Thank you. And I promise I will never raise the subject again. Yes, not with anybody. No, I haven't told a soul, and I never shall. <sighs> Look, Deirdre, I'm not trying to hurt you. I'm trying, believe it or not, to save you from being hurt. Oh, that's kind of you. OK. I'm off. I mean, just think about it, will you? I virtually live with the man. I know him. I know everything about him. Do you think I'm so stupid that I don't know the difference between a, a shop assistant and an airline pilot? Or that we don't talk about his work, where he's been, what the flight was like? I'm sure you do. Oh, but he's lying when he says all that, is he? And I'm so dumb, I just accept everything he says. Look, I've told you what happened. I've seen him twice. I've spoken to the assistant and she said he was the manager. And I'm telling you, Ken, you're wrong. Well, in all honesty, Deirdre, I hope I am. I really do hope I am. I mean, she didn't say I was lying, but she came very close. You know, made a mistake, got the wrong bloke, that sort of thing. But you've told her what you've seen. Spelled it out. Well, in that case, I think you've done all you can. Excuse me, Mr. Bishop. Well, what's the matter? Have you been into my bedroom? No, I haven't, Mr. Sugden. Why, anyway? Well, you know, I always pull my pyjamas and put them on the eider down. 
I think I might have noticed them, yes. Well, I polished my medals this morning. I didn't put them away. And somebody's pinned them on the pocket of my pyjamas. Well, I'm sorry. I don't know anything about that. Well, somebody must. We'll talk about it when you come home. You know, he'll have pinned those medals on his pyjamas himself, and now he's forgotten, and he comes accusing me. Do you think he might be getting past it? You know, I'm terrified I'm going to be spending the next five, ten years of my life nursing an elderly man to whom I am no relation and who pretty soon won't even remember my name. What's Deirdre going to do? Oh, I got the impression she isn't going to do anything. She doesn't believe a word I say, so why should she? Here we are, madam. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, can I? Go on, then. Lie your way out of this one. Listen, Deirdre, I was going to tell you... No! On second thoughts, don't. I don't want to hear another word. Because whatever you say, it's just going to be more lies, isn't it? Oh, and needless to say, I don't want you calling me, I don't want to hear from you, and I don't want to see you ever again. Okay? 